Okay, so now that we're in our manufacturer tab uh, that we set up from the last video, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the uh, machine code so that Fusion 360 knows what we're trying to work with here. Um, so we're going to go to uh, the setup under milling here. We're going to click the setup file. And then we see this little ghost image pop up over our solid, a bunch of arrows and points, and it uh, looks very intimidating, but it's, it's not. Um, so we're going to leave all this the same. Um, we're going to say model orientation is how it is because if our machine y-axis is facing this way, which it is in my case, um, our machine x-axis in our positive direction is going to be this way, which once again, same thing, we're going to be working with that. And then we've got our z-axis up and down. We're looking pretty good here. Um, but what we have to take in mind is that that is going to be our center point. So the center point of this box uh, length and width wise is our zero zero point so to speak. Um, so I'm going to leave all this stuff the same, but we can change it. Um, we can change uh, some of these settings to, let's say, we could we could select the X and Y axis, we can select the Z axis and everything like that. We can set our, our work coordinate systems if we wanted to. Um, but for now, this looks all right for, for our needs. Um, so what I'm going to do here is go to the stock option next. Um, and this is where the ghost image of the of the box comes from. We see there's a little edge here between our, our solid and then with this little, like I said, the ghost, I guess. Um, that is so if we're working with metal or wood or anything like that, and we're on a CNC machine, um, we're going to leave something like that on to face it, to create a even edge. So it'll go back and forth and get rid of that top layer and then it'll start working on the piece and so on and so forth with the other edges. But because if we're using a piece that we're not really going to do much manufacturing to or processing to, what we can do is um, we can set our, our stock offset mode to no additional stock. And then it just gives us just our solid. So this is all we're really looking for. We're not going to shave any material off of what we're already working with or anything like that. We're just going to be etching onto what we already have that's existing. Um, so then it gives us our, our, uh, our X, Y, and Z um, units, uh, which we set to a quarter inch, and then we set to our six inches and uh, four inches, I believe, um, and that's fine. So we're going to go into post process, um, and we can give the we can give this a name. So let's just say MI outline, um, and that's okay. We can leave it as that. We don't have to set a work coordinate system offset or anything like that. We just click OK, and boom, we've got our setup. Um, so our now that that's done. What we're going to do is we're going to engrave this. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go to this option here where it says 2D, and I'm going to hit engrave. And then, you know, nothing happens at first, right? Because we're just, you know, it's waiting for us to select an option of what we want to engrave. Um, so before I select any contours or anything like that, what we're going to do is this menu pops up over here. We're going to select our tool. Um, so I believe, yeah, I have some tools that I have already made from previous projects in here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to select one of the bits that I have. Um, and it's going to be one of the ones that I made before. So I have a 4.82 degree tapered bit. Um, but I have others like these bullnose ones, uh, varying, uh, diameter. I've got a flat end mill. I've got a little chamfer end mill. Um, so let's say, let's say I wanted to use my chamfer end mill for this, uh, which is just a standard V-bit. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click OK, because I already have this tool made. Um, and I'm going to click OK on this. And our tool pops up here. Um, I don't have coolant on, so I'm just going to disable the coolant. Uh, spindle speed doesn't really matter, because um, our, our machine that well, the machine that I'm using in particular, uh, controlling the spindle speed through the G-code, it's not affected. Um, but if you are controlling your spindle speed through your G-code, you're going to set this at whatever your speeds are going to be. You set your speeds and feeds here. Um, because my machine is a uh, woodworking router attached to a uh, gerbil controlled work system, it's all independent of one another. So I can set the speed that I want to go at on the router itself. Um, but for me, I normally set this at the max speed of the router, which we'll say is 30,000 RPM. Um, so I can set that, and it'll set most of the speeds and feeds accordingly, depending on what your material is here. So you can set this when you're designing it 
to wood or plastic or whatever. Um, but if your speed controller is independent of your G-code, it doesn't matter. Um, so after that, we're going to go to geometry. And we, where it says contour selection, we've got nothing selected. So now what I can do is I can zoom in a little bit. Um, and I'm, I'm mouse wheeling down to zoom in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to engrave this path here. There's two little paths here. So I'm going to engrave that path and that path. Um, and now we've got our little Michigan thing selected. Um, so now what we can do is we can go to heights. And here we see, once again, I'm going to shift click and uh, well, I'm going to hold down shift and move my middle mouse wheel, uh, click and hold it. Um, we can see that when the tool comes up and retracts, it retracts about five millimeters up. Um, and then the clearance between when we start is 15 millimeters. We can set this accordingly. Um, this, so what it'll do is when it starts this first path up here, it'll go down, mill it all out, and then it'll come up to five millimeters, go to the next path, and then go back down. Um, and I'm okay with, I'm okay with that kind of thing. Um, passes, um, we can say that um, for this, we can set multiple depths if we need to, like if we're milling down really deep. And a lot of these things, it's, what's really nice is that if you're confused on what something is, if you just hover over the box with your mouse, it'll come up with a little dialogue on um, what, the, what the option is that's selected is meant to do. Um, so we can see here that if I enable uh, multiple depths, we can get, you know, um, we can get exactly what it what it sounds like. We can get we can set multiple depths of, of varying values. So we can say, okay, we're going to make X number of passes, and each pass is going to go down maybe like ten millimeters or something like that, um, which is which is a lot. I mean, six point three five millimeters is a quarter of an inch. Um, so let's say a millimeter, right? Um, but after that, um, we're all good. There's this little last tab here that. It, for more advanced users, you can you can use this to do whatever you need to do, um, but it really is not going to make any difference. So once we're done, we hit OK. Um, it'll sit here and it'll it'll choose for a second. Um, and because it's an engraved pattern and we have a V bit, it says OK. I can do this tool path. Um, so now we've got this. We've got our tool. We've got these yellow lines, and then we're sitting here and we say, Oh, what does it mean? Um, so what we can do actually is uh, this is one of the best parts about the manufacturer tab is we can right click this engrave option and we can simulate it um, right here we see simulate um, but let's say we had multiple tool paths so like we had an engrave a facing option this that the third um, we've got our little simulate button right here so we can simulate it um, so now what we're going to do is we can say okay um, show me the tool path um, we can say, okay, show me the stock. Um, so what I like to do is when I'm milling something out, I turn the stock on so it says, okay, we're at our, it's almost like we're looking at our, our blank work piece, right? Um, and we can say, yeah, okay, sure, it's plastic vinyl or it's uh, ceramic or uh, like a mirror material or whatever, but I'm gonna leave it as plastic vinyl. Um, and what we can do is we don't need to worry about any of this stuff um, and we can, this is the speed at which it plays back. So I'll, I'll kind of demonstrate how this works. But now what we can do is we've got our little tool paths that are made. We're just going to hit play. And right now it is simulating the tool path. Um, so we can see that it's it's milling out the, um, the Michigan uh, emblem. Um, and we can see that even with the contour selected, uh, the depth at which we're going to is so deep as an engrave that it's kind of milling out most of the state portion as well. So it really comes down to how you program your tool, um, what kind of tool you're using, how thin your taper is, things like that. That's why I have my five degree taper bit uh, because I can get really fine resolution detail on here. Um, this is going so deep because that's one of the depths that we set in the uh, machining profile. Um, but we can see that it follows the path and then once it's done, um, it, it'll start milling the rest of it. But um, so now once once it's done, let's say we want to take a look at, okay, well, what's it going to look like? We can, we can hide the tool and we can zoom out a little bit and then we can select this top face and this is like we're looking top down. Um, so as we can see here, uh, it doesn't look all that great. Uh, for a first time go around, not 
not too great because we're taking out a lot of material here and then we've got some remaining wood or plastic or whatever here. Um, so what we can actually do is we can, we can go back and we can adjust this. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to close the simulation tab, go back to here, and then I'm going to right click the engrave and I'm just going to edit the whole thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is set this height to, um, let's say, do, 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 let's see here. Let's go to, um, let's see, what do I want to set everything at? Let's go to heights. Let's go to top height. And that's our selected contour. Um, and once again, it'll tell you the different options, kind of how all this uh, is. Um, we're going to set the top height at zero, but we're going to set our bottom height, what it's actually going to. Um, we're going to set it to, let's say, 0 0.1 millimeters. You know what? Let's do 0 0.25, a quarter of a millimeter. You know what? Let's even let's go a little bit deeper than that. Let's go 0 0.5, a half a millimeter, because we just want to we just want to skim the top, because um, we're just engraving here. So we're gonna hit OK. Um, we're gonna specify millimeters, because it'll it'll yell at us if uh, if we if we don't. And we also got to say negative, um, because it's relative to the top height. So if we have our top height selected, we want to go negative 0 0.5 millimeters below where we want that to be. Um, so I'm gonna hit OK. And then from there, it'll sit there and chooch again because we didn't change any other options. And we say, okay, look at that. We got our toolpath again. Okay, now let's simulate it. Simulate, and then I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna go straight to the top here. I'm gonna leave the tool deselected um, and I'm gonna still simulate it. And now what it's doing is it's going over the entire toolpath again, but now we don't have to worry about the tool. And every time you do a, a movement, it pauses it, which is nice. Um, and now it's changing to going to this Michigan spot here. Um, and let's say I want to bring the tool back. So I bring the tool back and boom, there we go. There's our V bit. It's carving out Michigan. Looks pretty good so far. We got a nice thin contour going. Um, and then look at that. You've got it finished up. I'm going to hide the tool again, go to the top face. And there is our Michigan. We've, we've carved it out. It looks, it looks all right for the most part. I mean, the plastic that we're working with isn't going to be super, super Hulk green, um, but it looks pretty good for the most part. I like it. Um, but that is how we can adjust some of the files and get everything set up the way we needed it to be set up to be able to etch or mill or laser engrave or anything like that.